The Cosmo is probably one of the most approachable cocktails in any bartender's pantheon. It is something that almost anybody can make, and no matter how you make it, regardless of how disputed your spec may be, it comes out delicious. Let's take that and make it appropriate for the holidays. Hey there, hi there, ho there. My name is Michael. I'm a former bartender from the Kalamazoo area. And today we're gonna take a look at the uh, sort of modern classic cocktail that is the Cosmo and make it more fall adjacent by swapping around some of the flavors and making it sort of, there's gotta be a word for it, festive. That's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> Cosmo is normally um, uh, uh, citron vodka, so like lemon vodka. Um, triple sec, cranberry juice, and uh, lime juice. Here, I've rebalanced the spec to change a couple things around and introduce more wintry flavors into it to make it more appropriate for the holidays. You'll need everything in front of you. Uh, this is just a basic, simple syrup to start. Some apple juice. I picked up a 100% organic apple juice just to make it nice and easy and give it a nice crisp flavor. You're gonna need some triple sec. Um, the nicer, the better. Du Kuiper is gross, don't bother. Some green apple vodka. I chose Smirnoff in this case and some cranberry juice. This is actually, I mentioned this in the last episode as well, um, this is actually half and half pomegranate and cranberry juice. They're pretty interchangeable as far as flavor palettes go. Um, so I just combined this 50-50 to get both in there uh, for both color and flavor. Uh, with that out of the way, let's just get started. A Cosmo is a shake and drink, uh, so we need our shaker here. And I'm gonna start with the half an ounce of simple syrup. So you're, you're very big on very fruity cocktails, right? Mm -hmm. You're gonna like this one, I think. I haven't had Cosmopolitan for I did not like it. Really? Yeah. That's surprising. Any particular reason why? I just didn't like it. Huh. Fair enough, I guess. Uh, next up, we need a half an ounce of lime juice. Squeeze that right in there. Uh, we're gonna need uh, next up an ounce of apple juice. Like I said, I'm using organic. The better you can find, go for it. Cheap apple juice is kind of gross, unless it's Mott's, and then it's the right kind of cheap. Lots of apple juice is really good. <laughs> it's, I think it's because it's mostly, it's from concentrate and it's got like lime in it, I think. Does it? I think so. A lot a lot of uh, a lot of juices from concentrate get their citric acid content from lime or like citrus of some kind. So whenever you see from concentrate, uh, some of it is like citrus component. Like a lot of cranberry juice is a cranberry juice blend. It's like cranberry and apple, and then like two, usually two other juices, like grape and uh, something else. When we had This tastes, tastes like they use Mott's in It does, yeah. It actually did. Yeah. There's that kind of specific, like, mass-produced flavor it yeah. has. <laughs> I don't know what it is, how they make that, but it did taste exactly like that. You're familiar, so right? Next up, we're gonna need uh, an ounce of uh, orange liqueur. I'm using triple sec in this case, and I would recommend sticking with that. Anything other than De Kuiper will get the job done because De Kuiper is just cheap. We're also going to need half an ounce of our cranberry juice or cranberry juice alternative. Like I said, in this case, this is half and half cranberry pomegranate. And then uh, substituting for what is traditionally in a uh, Cosmo, which is lemon vodka, I'm using green apple vodka from Spirnoff. Flavored vodkas are all about the same. I imagine most companies make them with their relatively somehow poor quality vodka, whatever comes off the still, and then just flavor it to keep you from noticing. So. If you want to go up to like absolute, I wouldn't go any more expensive than that. I don't, I don't know why you would want to get like a fifty dollar bottle of flavored vodka. It doesn't seem advisable. Because I'm a responsible adult, um, I have never gotten to the point where I've thrown up. Um, I have. I. But even like when I smell vodka, I'm like, oh. Yeah, that's me with Fireball. Can you guess why? <laughs> <laughs> now that we've got everything uh, set aside in there, we just need to add some ice and give it a quick shake. I'm gonna cap this up and give it a good shake. Oh, that didn't seal. Hold on. This drink doesn't call for uh, a glass with any kind of rim or garnish on it. So we can take any kind of coupe style glass and use that. And take that and just put a quick, Oh, I've had bad luck with this today. We're gonna double strain that directly into the glass just to catch the ice. And then to complete the garnish, I have an apple here. Um, normally I would go for a honey crisp because they are just objectively the best apple. Agreed. Yeah, right? <laughs> Everybody agrees. I don't I don't know of a single person who disagrees with that statement. I, I've heard people say Granny Smith because they're like the green tart apples and those are good. Nah. They're, they're better baking apples. You don't need a Granny Smith fair. raw. They're, they're my mom's favorite. Right, Smith? No, honey crisp. Oh, fair. See, because your mom's got good taste. That's why. <laughs> we're gonna take uh, an apple, we're gonna cut off a sort of like a, like a coin of it, and then take a couple of small wedges out of it. 
We're gonna take those, kind of feather them like that, and put, a, yeah, I know, I saw this on, on Pinterest, and I was like, I'm doing that shit. You put a cut, the, uh, and then when the, with the feathered like that, so that they line up that way when you put them on the glass. And put those over the edge, like so. And then I'm also going to add a line wheel, actually, I'll do a line wedge behind them to sort of harken to the uh, traditional garnish for a Cosmo. And it's like red and green too. Exactly, yeah, it's Christmassy, right? I'm on, I'm on, my, I'm on my game today. <laughs> and that is a red apple Cosmo. Um, let us give it a taste. Oh, yeah, that's good. It's kind of, it's, it's partly like biting into an apple. It's got that kind of crispness to it that you would expect from biting into just a regular apple. But it's also got this kind of fruit punch, fruit cocktail thing going on. You get a lot of orange in it actually from the triple sec we were using. And then the lime is bringing in some acidity, maybe a little bit of sourness. The cranberry is kind of in the back to help contribute to this color. You do get that berry impact though, which is surprising along all these uh, kind of loud flavors. Am I reminded of Christmas when I bite into an apple? No, apple pie though, yes. I mean, it, 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 it does, I mean, I think for some people it definitely brings this Christmas. Apple, like, like baked, bake, it's, it's like a baked apple, kind of, actually. But if you take the spices out of a baked apple. Do you want to give it a shot? Sure. What do you think? Oh, hold on. What do you think? <laughs> she has taken multiple steps. I take that as a good sign. <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out how I feel about it. Um. Mm. It's puzzling. It is, it's very apple-y, which I do appreciate. Mm -hmm. Um, that's fine. <laughs> not your, just not your thing? No. That's fair. You have to really like apple. Because it sort of takes apple and not only makes it the key flavor, but it also kind of blows it up a little bit. Yeah. Mm. I'm not mad at it. I will say the presentation is nice though. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like double fruit garnish. Looks, looks pretty. And I'm doubly happy over here because I get to snack on what is actually a really good apple. <laughs> yeah, here, one taste this one. Well, this has been uh, day seven of 25 drinks of Christmas. I'm gonna swallow before I say anything else because that was kind of gross. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, click that like button down below. And as always, the recipe will be in the description so you can make it for yourself. Honestly, if you like apple anything, this is probably the way to go. And if you threw a caramel sauce rim on this, mm -hmm. Caramel apples, there's your holiday spirit right there. That's more fall. Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, more fall, but like you still get like the, the spirit of a holiday in that, I think. I get fall. You think you get fall, straight up fall? Yeah. That's an option if you wanna give it a shot. I feel like caramel apple martinis might actually be a thing someplace. I feel like I've heard that. Yeah, it does sound good, right? Thank you so much for watching. Tune in tomorrow for yet another episode of 25 Drinks of Christmas. See you then.